not Tianzi. I'm not trying to solve the problem here. <laughs> it is impossible in a few minutes. But I'm just trying to uh, explain to you uh, the complication. Even even though I, I understand that you know already how complex it is, but just try to anim animate the complexities uh, so to make it worse. <laughs> so this is the land area. Uh, this is what we call uh, semi enclosed a sea. Can you imagine that the sea is enclosed by land? It is usually land enclosed by sea, but there's now like sea enclosed by land. Can you imagine how complex, complex it is now in terms of the uh, maritime claim? If oceans are enclosed or surrounded by, by land. Uh, this is the, the countries around. So Indonesia is presently a part of the equation, even though I'll, I'll tell you later on I mean, in, in, what, in what aspect. So this is the islands, Sepali Islands, if you, it's an infamous island, they disputed by many. Uh, okay, this is the baseline of Indonesia, baseline of our country, something like that, so start to develop the, the, the claim. So there are two archipelagic states in this area, Indonesia and the Philippines. And this is what we call, so see the different uh, status of those uh, uh, water. Even though it is within the straight baseline, but uh, Indonesia and Philippines are entitled to what they call it archipelagic baselines. But this this is not archipelagic baseline, but straight baseline. So it is governed uh, by different provision in the law of the sea convention. Article seven, straight baseline. Article forty-seven, archipelagic baseline. So the the, the characters are. are so from that baseline, they can claim uh, a territorial sea, right? So this is the territorial sea claimed from baseline or an island. So it doesn't matter who owns this island, still it is entitled to 12 micro miles of territorial sea. I'm not really saying uh, who owns this uh, uh, water or island. Okay, if you try to generate the 200 nautical miles from uh, the mainland, this will be the result. So it generates a hole over here. But if the line is measured from the baseline, if you know what I mean, the previous one was measured from the land. And now it's measured from the baseline, which it, we generate the, uh, a smaller hole now. Why do I need to uh, show this hole, meaning that this can be high sea, right? Because the, the maximum entitlement of country is up to two, uh, in terms of water, is up to 200 nautical miles from its baseline. So it can be a high seas within this uh, uh, enclosed sea. However, if we try to imagine this small island is entitled to 200 nautical miles, for example, it will. It, it might be bad, it might be uh, different. So it will be like 200 nautical miles from here, 200 nautical miles from here, and from all other. But the thing is, whether an island is entitled to more than 12 nautical miles, it has to be proven technically. First, it has to be proven that it is really an island, not merely a rock, not a low tide elevation. Sorry, this is the technical term. Okay, island is anything always appear even during high tide. That is island or rock. If it, is, uh, if it appears during low tide only, but this appears during high tide, it is not an island, it is called low tide elevation. So this kind of, uh, 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 why is the, dif the difference are really important? Because low tide elevation cannot really claim more than 12 nautical miles of, of you know, water. It is, it is quite tough anyway. anyway Okay, this is what China claimed as the nine dust line. So China claimed that this area belongs to China. That is actually one of the source of the complication in, in that area, because China claimed that the entire area by issuing a map in 1947, uh, claiming this, uh, this entire area as, as uh, part of, uh, you know, uh, belongs to This even creates a uh, more complication because uh, during the, the colonialism era, the, the French.
friends actually draw that this box as part of the Philippines. We can imagine back then in 1800, probably it does not really uh, uh, mean to claim the water, but any island within that box. But now, because it, it was not really clear saying that, uh, people now interpret that this box also includes the water contained in that box. So can you imagine how uh, compli uh, com uh, complicated the situation is if the Philippines really want to uh, impose this uh, this uh, rule or treaty in claiming the water around it. This is a polygon that is uh, drawn by the Philippines to claim the group of islands called Kalayaan uh, Island Group, KIG. Anyone, anybody from the Philippines? Eh? That's why I did uh, I said something wrong. <laughs> uh, and this is Malaysia's claim. Remember the Papa Baru and the Italy 9? So it uh, does not only cover this area. Remember the Ambalat case? It also covers it to, to put the complexity in the situation. And this is uh, a Brunei, Brunei claim. This is the agreement between Brunei and Malaysia for the joint development area. Indonesia also take part. This is what Indonesia, sorry, what Indonesia claim once again for the water. Remember this one, this land. If you still remember, it is actually the seabed boundary between Indonesia, Malaysia, <coughs> Indonesia, uh, Vietnam. But for the water, this is what Indonesia thinks to be the best uh, option. This is the Singapore Pedro Branca. You, you won the case over uh, the sovereignty of Pedro Branca and Pedro Branca in particular. So from Pedro Branca, uh, according to me, or my analysis, there is this possibility to claim uh, 12 nautical, uh, sorry, 200 nautical miles if Pedro Branca is really proven as, a, uh, as an island, remember? But uh, our friends from Malaysia might not really agree that Pedro Branca is, is an island. So it is, it is the limit that it can claim is only 12 nautical miles. So it is interesting, actually, I, I may observe that uh, before uh, the case was decided by the Court of Justice, uh, Malaysia also called this as a Pulau Batu uh, With the word Pulau in Thailand, right? But soon after the case was decided uh, and uh, the sovereignty was given to Singapore, they changed the name into, into only Batu Putih. And they just take out the word Pulau because using the word Pulau actually to confirm that it is actually an island because that, that's something that they don't really want. Because giving it the status of island means giving them the uh, entitle bigger entitlement in terms of maritime claims. Huh. Uh, GMSU. Uh, this is actually the survey conducted by these uh, three countries. Ah, interesting. Vietnam claimed that as part of its uh, uh, seabed by giving concession even to other countries. And this is where the incident took place, the cable cutting. And this is uh, what released by China recently, or last year, I think, like the, the concession. Even though it is, it is still disputed, but uh, China already opened this for bidding uh, to other uh, uh, foreign companies. So, and this is the submission of continental shelf by Malaysia and Vietnam to the United Nations. Uh, United Nations. So this is how complex the situation is in the South China Sea. Uh, I don't even, you know, know where to start, you know, like how to solve this issue. But this is a, we can always talk about this later on if you are interested. But for Indonesia's perspective, of course, this area are the one that is in the censorship. <coughs> so if people say that Indonesia is not part of the South China Sea uh, uh, dispute, it might not be entirely correct. 